Hey guys, so today we're going to use some basic Wireshark to look at some network packets and just do some basic packet sniffing, um, specifically HTTP packets. So basically when you start Wireshark, um, you'll see the different network interfaces. And so my network interface for a network card is this top one right here. So I'm going to click on that. And Wireshark will start capturing all the IP packets. So most of these are like DNS, um, TCP, um, TLS for, um, and then ICMP, things you really don't want, like router ad advertisements, uh, pings, um, who has, uh, you really don't really want to see this, can't really get that much from it, um, but with HT, if you, if we can look at some HTTP requests soon. So up, up top is display filters, so you can see uh, specific packets instead of this jumbled uh, span of tons of different packets. So we can look at DNS packets, the name, dom domain name server, um, and these are specific uh, DNS packets, mostly from Google Drive uh, and uh, Coinbase. Coinbase is for uh, my thing up here. Okay, so if we want to look at uh, some, let's see, TCP specific packets, um, that's right here. Um, and then, so now we're going to look at HTTP. So these, right now, there's no HTTP requests right now, so we're just going to make our own. We're going to visit an HTTP website. So you might, before we do that, you might ask, what's the difference between HTTP and HTTPS? So HTTP is just regular, regularly uh, requesting to go to a website and doing regular stuff on a website and it's not encrypted. So anyone who's using Wireshark or something like it can actually look through your packets and take out sensitive information that might be passwords or um, anything of the sorts. So um, with HTTPS it adds some encryption to it. So when you, um, usually with like banking and um, other software and websites it actually encrypts the connection for you so people can't steal your passwords over the network but say um, your banking website forgets to put HTTPS support in there and we'll simulate a HTTP request right here so this is a HTTP website and I'll show you just what you can see with it as you can see we can see the incoming connection we see the get request from the server that we sent to the server and so we look at this packet so right now if you didn't have anything like Wireshark you just get all these bytes right here and you wouldn't understand it so Wireshark does great about uh, decoding this header and everything so we look under the hypertext transfer protocol or HTTP um, and then we can see the get request right here and uh, request method is the get method the URI request version so that's not really a big deal, but look, we can see um, in the packet, we can see the source IP address and the destination IP address. So someone could steal your IP address over the network and even like inject packets uh, with malware and other things. So um, we can see where I was going to, cfogram1.wix.com, as we can see to the left. Um, we can see that I was using Mozilla Firefox on Linux 64-bit um, Firefox version 47. Um, and we can also see uh, different cookies. So um, these are all cookies that the um, the website sent to my browser. And we can also see the uh, the transmission, the TCP uh, connection. So we see the source port, destination port. So this is the port on the server, and then it sends it through the port 80, because all HTTP requests go through port 80 and HTTPS goes through port 443. So you can see the header length is 43 bytes um, and then we can see that the destination port uh, I mean the destination source and then the regular source. Um, so we'll look at that and then so it shows where the this is the IP address of the client so this is me requesting the website and then this is the server which sends me the website and you can also see things about the network 
Um, for example, HughesNet, I use HughesNet as my internet, and you can see that right there. So this is pretty important. You can see a great deal um, of stuff with this, and you can also follow uh, the follow the stream. So you can see with this, you can see the whole, pretty much the whole conversation with uh, the the server. So here's a get request. It asks it from the server. It gets asked for the cookies, and they keep and it asks to keep alive the connection. So then it gets this um, basic HTML that the and this is all the HTML that the server is sending the, um, the client. So um, it's pretty cool. You can see um, how the website, how a regular website, and uh, the user who's accessing the website really interacts. Um, so that's really cool, um, really important, and here's pretty much the uh, um, the conversation that I had sending uh, the HTML across the TCP port 80 and 58586. So as you can see, there's different uh, connections and stuff for this. So it just sends over the HTML files. The browser kind of puts it together and then. Uh, make it where you can actually see the web page like this. So thanks for watching. Hopefully you learned some things about Wireshark and how you can uh, look at different packets, inspect the packets, uh, see the kind of packet conversations, and uh, kind of confirms why you should be using HTTPS instead of HTTP because people um, with the skills that you've learned now can steal your passwords and everything. So there's a thing called HTTPS Everywhere, as you can see in my browser extension right here. So pretty much it forces, H if there's an HTTPS um, there, it'll force it. Because some sites don't automatically make HTTPS by default, so this is what it does. This is what HTTPS everywhere is used for. It forces HTTPS on websites where it's not default. It's very useful, keeps good security. It's developed by the Electronic uh, Frontier Foundation, great organization. But thank you, give it a like if you liked it. Dislike if you didn't, and subscribe. Thank you.